What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Still here in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 66. And here in Isaiah 66, uh, we have the last chapter of the book of Isaiah. And as far as the Bible studies I've been doing, it's the last chapter of the prophets. So, um... Uh, not not that I'm aiming for or looking for any type of uh, accomplishment, but I do want to uh, get the word of God to you guys, and uh, it's good to be able to finish up the prophets. And I'm just amazed that God chose me and even or even allowed me to. Uh, speak his word and to speak his prophecies and of course I don't have everything figured out none of us do but I do believe God has given me a good understanding on a lot of this stuff I do believe a lot of people are wrong a lot of uh, doctrines are wrong a lot of people have learned from false doctrines for a long time and continue to learn from false doctrines and false teachers and then they just repeat, the people who hear it repeat and teach others and they repeat and they're just a bunch of lies. But God has given me the opportunity to speak his word and I, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm eternally grateful. I thank him. I praise him. I glorify him. And um, all glory to him. All glory to him. Hallelujah. It's, uh, it's really a blessing to be able to, to speak his word. And... Um, And sorry if you hear any background noise. I'm here at a house where there's uh, chihuahuas. Oh. Uh, so the chihuahua just uh, came out here tapping his little uh, paws around, making some noise. So hopefully uh, that won't be a bother. Hopefully that won't be an issue in his video. He probably. Won't continue running around, but you know it's a it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be able to speak the word of God, and uh, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it at all. Uh, not at all. But God is gracious. God chose to use me to speak His word, and uh, I'm thankful. So what's up next before we even get into Isaiah 66? What's up next? Uh, Lord willing, we're going to continue on with the daily psalm videos. Uh, potentially getting into the book of Enoch. And maybe doing a series called The Words of Jesus. Just going through not not every chapter in the Gospels, but... But his words and uh, the surrounding context uh, of his words and just, just what he taught, what he lived and who he is, who he who he was as a human here. Because it was God born as a human. Lived as a human. And he is a perfect example of how to live. So. uh Before we get into Isaiah 66, let me go ahead and preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins, anyone who hasn't received the free gift of salvation is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death, the body and soul. This first death is just the body. The second death is body and soul. Destroyed forever. But God offers us eternal life. God offers us salvation. 
and he requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to, to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God. There's nothing we can do to earn eternal life. He requires perfection. And no one has been perfect except Jesus. Jesus is God. He's not the Father, but He's the Son. He was born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although He was perfect and did nothing wrong, He, he didn't deserve any punishment. He didn't deserve to die. The death that He did, died was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, He died for us on a cross. So that through Him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through Him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection, his righteousness. Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or a change of mind. It means to truly give your life to God, truly turn to him. Most of the, most of the time we see repent in the Bible, it means to uh, turn away from your wickedness and turn to God. Turn away from your sins. Turn to God. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later and you call out to him to forgive you, to save you, and you truly mean it, he will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit, which changes, changes your heart and leads you to follow him. The Holy Spirit also gives you wisdom, discernment, and understanding in the Bible and in many things. He will forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. Can't even imagine it. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. There's not much time left. Now let's get into Isaiah 66. Hallelujah. Thus says Yahuwah. Thus says the Lord. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. <laughs> God is great. God is all-powerful. He said, heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. <laughs> wow. Where then is a house that you could build for me? See, he built a house for himself. And I'm not talking about the new Jerusalem. I'm not talking about his temple in heaven. I'm talking about us. We are the house of God. We are the temple of God. We're all individual living stones that build up the temple of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. Where then is a house that you could build for me? And where is a place that I may rest? For my hand made all these things. And the hand of the Lord. Whenever it says hand, at least most of the time, the hand of the Lord or the arm of the Lord is speaking about Jesus. For my hand made all these things. Hallelujah. Thus all these things came into being. And the Bible says in the book of John. All things came into being through him. And without him nothing came into being that has come into being. For my hand made all these things. Thus all these things came into being. Declares, declares Yahuwah. But to this one, I will look to him who is humble and contrite of spirit and who trembles at my word. This is very important to understand, very important to live, to be. For my hand made all these things. 
Thus all these things came into being, declares Yahuwah. But to this one I will look. Speaking about us. But to this one I will look. Some he's not going to look to. Because of their actions. But to this one I will look. To him who is, to him who is humble. God hates pride. God exalts the humble and humbles the proud. To him, to him who is humble and contrite of spirit and who trembles at my word. Contrite of spirit and contrite means feeling or expressing remorse or penitence, affected by guilt, affected by guilt. I see there's, there's so many people out here, so many people, so many believers out here, who this, who say that we're not supposed to have any guilt, we're not supposed to feel any guilt once once we come to faith, that once we come to faith and, and receive forgiveness of sins, we don't ever have to worry about anything ever again. And we don't have to feel any guilt because all our sins, past and future, are forgiven. So we don't even have to feel any guilt for them. That's a lie. And maybe not an intentional lie, but that's a lie. That's false. Yes, we need to feel guilt. When, when we screw up, when we sin, yes, we need to be completely repentant and turn away from that. We need to feel guilt. And if we don't feel guilt, guilt is the Holy Spirit accusing us. Guilt, guilt is the Holy Spirit uh, transforming us, changing us, convicting us. And if we don't have the Holy Spirit convicting us, then either we don't have, we never were saved in the first place, or maybe we blasphemed the Spirit and lost our salvation. But we are supposed to feel guilt. We're supposed to feel guilt. We are supposed to keep God's commandments to the best of our ability. And, I, and I've seen multiple people come out and say that oh I, I used to I used to feel like that I used to be like that but but then I realized the grace of God and that, that we shouldn't be feeling guilt and and that we have freedom in Christ and and that we shouldn't worry about not that we shouldn't worry about our sins but that that we shouldn't that, that we shouldn't have any guilt. And that's not true. That's not true at all. And we, we see in the word. Contrite. Feeling or expressing remorse or penitence. Repentance. Affected by guilt. Affected by guilt. And if we're not affected by guilt, if we don't have guilt for our sins, then there's a problem. Don't don't let anybody tell you that if you have guilt that if you have guilt for your sins that, that, that there's a problem and, and you don't have a you don't truly trust in God. That's not the case at all. This is false doctrine. These are false teachers. There's so many false teachers out here. We have to be very careful and we have to know the word of God. We have to have a relationship with God. For my hand made all these things. Thus all these things came into being. Declares Yahuwah. But to this one I will look. To him who is humble. And contrite of spirit. And who trembles at my word. And that's another thing. People don't fear God. People who say this and, and, and act like this and believe this, they don't have a true fear of God. 
and they don't tremble at, at his word. They're not contrite of they're not contrite of spirit, and a lot of the time they're not humble. But God says, But to this one I will look to him who is humble and contrite of spirit, and who trembles at my word. Let's not be deceived. We have to be fully repentant and following God. It's very important. And so this next part, it goes through like sacrifices. So basically this is the opposite of those. So, so basically it says, So this one I will look to him who is humble, contrite of spirit, repentant, and who trembles at my word. But those who don't tremble at his word, those who are not repentant and contrite of spirit, those who are not humble, says, But he who kills an ox is like one who slays a man. And this isn't the sacrifices of God from the people who truly follow him. But this is sacrifices to God from people that don't have a true relationship with him. Who don't truly follow him, follow him with their heart. But he who kills an ox is like one who slays a man. He who sacrifices a lamb is like the one who breaks a dog's neck. He who offers a grain offering is like one who offers swine's blood. He who burns incense is like the one who blesses an idol. As they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delights in their abominations. One more time, as they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delights in their abominations. Speaking about not the people who are humble and contrite of spirit and tremble at his word, who have a fear of God and and are worried uh, and are worried about breaking his commandments, are worried about um, screwing up. We should be. We definitely should be. Don't let anybody tell you that if you're you're worried about sin, if you're worried about screwing up, that uh, that uh, you don't tr truly have faith and you don't know the true gospel. These are false prophets. But to this one I will look, to him who is humble and contrite of spirit and who trembles at my word. But he who kills a man, or he, or he, who, kill, he who kills an ox is like one who slays a man. <laughs> and he who sacrifices a lamb is like one who breaks a dog's neck. He who offers a grain offering is like one who offers swine's blood. He who burns incense is like one who blesses an idol. As they have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations, so I will choose their punishments and will bring on them what they dread. Because I called and no one answered. In other words, he called, he convicted, but no one answered. People think they don't have to worry about that, that, that conviction, that, that, if they, that if they have that conviction of the Holy Spirit, it's something wrong. But that's false. That's false doctrine. I spoke, but they did not listen. And they did evil in my sight. And chose that in which I, didn't, in which I did not delight. Hear the word of Yahuwah. You who tremble at his word. Your brothers... Speaking about the other ones who don't tremble at his word. Your brothers who hate you, who exclude you for my name's sake, have said, let Yahuwah be glorified, that we may see your joy. But they will be put to shame. 
a voice of uproar from the city. So right after it says, right after it speaks on what it's speaking about here, because this is prophecy. This is about us. This is about the body of Christ right now. So right after, right after it speaks about this, it says, Your brothers who hate you, who exclude you for my name's sake, have said, Let Yahuwah be glorified, that we may see your joy. But they will be put to shame. A voice of uproar from the city. We're talking about the city of God. A voice from the temple. We're talking about the temple of God. The city of God. The New Jerusalem. The voice of Yahuwah, who is rendering recompense to his enemies. And this doesn't just mean unbelievers and people who are acting wickedly in this, in this earth. But it means his people who are acting wickedly and not truly following him, not being repentant. It's all about repentance, a true repentance. A voice of uproar from the city, a voice from the temple, the voice of Yahuwah who was rec rendering recompense to his enemies. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she gave birth to a boy. And so the, the woman in labor here, this is the same woman in labor that we see in all the scriptures. This is the woman in Revelation chapter 12. This is Israel. It says, before she travailed, before, before she tra travailed, so that travail, that, that birth pain is the Gog Magog war. Before she travailed, she brought forth the rapture. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she gave birth to a boy. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such things? Can a land be born in one day? Can a nation be brought forth at once? And so, so this wasn't fulfilled in 1948. Many people say this was fulfilled in 1948. That's not the case. Although the people in the land of Israel, this is Judah. That is going to fulfill the end time prophecies of Judah. But it's not this. It's not this prophecy. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she gave birth to a boy. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Can a land be born in one day? Can a nation be brought forth all at once? As soon as, as, soon as Zion travailed, she also brought forth her sons. And you know what? I didn't realize this until just now. I was thinking that the 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 where it says before she travailed that it's speaking about the same thing as 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 soon as she travailed. Because here in where are we at? Here in verse eight it says, As soon as Zion travailed, she also brought forth her sons. But this is the second time it's mentioned. And the first time says, before she travailed. And this is because the first birth, because it's <laughs> not twins, but two children, basically. The first birth. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before she travailed, she brought forth. This is the 144,000. Before the trouble comes upon the earth. Before the tribulation. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she gave birth to a boy. This is the 144,000. Who has heard such, such a thing? Who has seen such things? Can a land be born in one day? Can a nation be brought forth all at once? As soon as, as, soon as Zion travailed, so this is while Zion is travailing. Not before, this is while Zion is travailing. As soon as Zion travailed, she also brought she also brought forth her sons. And that's the main rapture. And from my understanding, they're ten days apart. And 
And while Israel is being attacked, while America is being attacked, this is when Jesus comes on the clouds and the main rapture happens. But beforehand, the 144,000 are, are going to be caught up beforehand, the first fruits to God. The first fruits to God. And they're going to be a part of his army, a part of his uh, weapon of war to carry out his judgment upon this earth. As soon as Zion travailed, she also brought forth her sons. Shall I bring to the point of birth and not give delivery, says Yahuwah? Shall I, in other words, shall I bring to the point of birth? Shall I bring to the point of birth, in other words, the birth pains? The birth pains are occurring. The tribulation is beginning. And not give delivery to his people? God is good. God is good, but we have to be right with him. Shall I bring to the point of birth and not give delivery, says Yahuwah? Or shall I who gives delivery shut the womb, says your God? Be joyful with Jerusalem and rejoice for her, all you who love her. And he's speaking about the new Jerusalem. Be exceedingly glad with her, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied with her comforting breasts, that you may suck and be delighted with her bountiful bosom. And so, so about this part, about this part, um, we read in Galatians chapter 4 verse 26, but Jerusalem above is free. She is our mother. She is our mother. And also, we know that the promised land, which is ultimately the New Jerusalem, we see so many places that it's a land flowing with milk and honey. Mentions a ton of times, a land flowing with milk and honey. And here in Isaiah 66. Be joyful with Jerusalem and rejoice over her, all you who love her. Be exceedingly glad with her, all you who mourn over her. That you may nurse and be satisfied with her comforting breasts. That you may suck and be delighted with her bountiful bosom. The milk. From the mother, the mother Jerusalem. For thus says Yahuwah, Behold, I extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you will be nursed, you will be carried on the hip, and fondled on the knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. And you will be comforted in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Then you will see this and your heart will be glad. And your bones will flourish like the new grass. And the hand of Yahuwah, Jesus, will be made known to his servants. But he will be indignant toward his enemies. The hand of Yahuwah will be made known to his servants. But he will be indignant toward his enemies. For behold, Yahuwah will come in fire, in his chariots like the whirlwind. We know it's uh it's like a storm when he comes, it's the whirlwind. For behold, Yahuwah the Lord will come in fire, and his chariots like the whirlwind, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For Yahuwah will execute judgment by fire and by his sword on all flesh. And those who are slain by Yahuwah will be many. He's going to judge the, he judged the earth uh, the first time with water. The next time with fire. And I'm going to just go through, read a few scriptures. Psalm 18 verse 8. Smoke went up out of his nostrils and fire from his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. 
Psalm 21, verse 9, says, You will make them as a fiery oven in the time of your anger. Yahuwah will swallow them up in his wrath and, and fire will devour them. Psalm 50, verse 3. May our God come and not keep silence. Fire devours before him, and it is very tempestuous around him. Psalm 97 verse 3, Fire goes out before him and burns up his adversaries round about. Isaiah 29 verse 6. From Yahuwah of armies, you will be punished with thunder and earthquake. Six seal. And loud noise. And this is all mentioned in the book of Revelation together. With whirlwind and tempest and a flame of a consuming fire. Isaiah 30 verse 30. And Yahuwah will cause his voice of authority to be heard, and the descending of his arm to be seen in fierce anger, and in the flame of a consuming fire, and cloudburst, downpour, and hailstones. Jeremiah 15 verse 14. Then I will cause your enemies to bring it into a land which you do not know. For a fire has been kindled in my anger, it will burn upon you. Ezekiel 19 verse 14. And fire has gone out from his branch. And I believe, if I remember right, this is speaking about Jesus, the branch. It has consumed its shoots and fruit, so there is not, not in it a strong branch except of the rule. Ezekiel 21, verse 31. I will pour out my indignation on you. I will blow on you with the fire of my wrath. And I will give you under the hand of brutal men skilled in destruction. And one more here. Daniel chapter 7, starting in verse 9. I kept looking until thrones were set up. And the Ancient of Days, the Father, took his seat. His vesture was like white snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was ablaze with flames. Its wheels were a burning fire. A fire was flo a fire, a river of, of fire was flowing. And coming out from before him, thousands upon thousands were attending him, and myriads upon myriads were standing before him. The court, the court set, and the books were open. For behold, Yahuwah will come in fire, and his chariots like the whirlwind, to render anger, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. Hallelujah. For Yahuwah will execute judgment by fire and by his sword on all flesh, and those who those slain by Yahuwah, those slain by the Lord, will be many. Those who sanctify and puri and purify themselves. To go to the gardens, so the gardens, we are all plants. The gardens in this scripture and in some, some other scriptures represent the church, a uh, body of believers. So this is speaking about going to church. And what this, is, what this is saying here is speaking about those who just go to church on Sunday and then live the, the rest of the week for themselves. Those who sanctify and purify themselves to go to the gardens, to go to church. Those who sanctify and purify themselves to go to church. Those who live unholy all week, but then sanctify and purify themselves in order to go to church. This is what it's prophesying here. This is what it's saying. Those who sanctify and purify themselves to go to the gardens. Following one in the center. 
the pastor, who eat swine's flesh, detestable things, and mice, will come to an end altogether, declares Yahuwah. Those who sanctify and purify themselves to go to the gardens, those who act holy for church on Sunday, but still live like the world the rest of the week, who, who live for whatever the rest of the week and, and eat pork and, and whatever, will come to an end altogether, declares Yahuwah, declares the Lord. One more time, those who sanctify and purify themselves to go to the gardens, following one in the center, the pastor, who eats swine's flesh, detestable things and mice, will come to an end altogether, declares Yahuwah. And these food commandments still apply. Pork is still unclean, according to God. And according to scientists as well. For I know their works and their thoughts. See, God knows us all. He knows our works and our thoughts. For I know their works and their thoughts. The time is coming to gather all nations and tongues. Sorry, uh, I'm not even that tired. I, I don't know why. I just keep going. And, uh, it's got to be the enemy. Uh, I, most likely. For I know their works and their thoughts. The time is coming to gather all nations and tongues. And they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them. This is 144,000. The, the, the uh, standard. And I will set a sign among them. And will send survivors from them. To the nations. And so. I believe this is speaking about. Those who survive the day of the Lord. And come to faith. And God is going to send them out to the rest of the world. Uh, preaching the gospel. And. I mean. I don't, I don't even. Never mind. For I know their works and their thoughts. The time is coming to gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them, and will send survivors from them to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, Lud, Meshach, Tubal, and Javan, to the distant coastlands who have neither heard of my fame nor seen my glory. And they will declare my glory among the nations. And so I do believe this is at the beginning. I believe this is survivors who survived the either the wrath of, against the wrath of God. And uh, as I said a minute ago, the the main rapture. You know. Uh, I believe this is after that. I believe this is people who come to faith after it's too late to be saved from the tribulation time. And they shall bring um, then they shall bring all your brethren from all the nations as a grain offering to Yahuwah. We are the grain. We are the uh, John the Baptist said about Jesus he said he is going to gather his wheat and it was born and then burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The wheat is his people. Then they shall bring all your brethren from all the nations as a grain offering to Yahuwah, on horses, in chariots, on litters, on mules and camels, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, his kingdom, hallelujah. Says Yahuwah, just as the sons of Israel bring their grain offering in a clean vessel to the house of Yahuwah, I will also take some of them for priests and for Levites, says Yahuwah. For just as the new heaven and new earth which I make will endure before me, declares Yahuwah, so your offspring and your name will endure. And it shall be from new moon to new moon, and from Sabbath to Sabbath. All mankind will come and, and bow down before me, says Yahuwah. And we read about this here in uh, Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah 14, verse 16. Then it will come about that any who are left of all the nations that went up against Jerusalem 
will go from year to year to worship the king, Yahuwah of armies, and to celebrate the Feast of Booths. And it shall be from new moon to new moon, and from Sabbath to Sabbath all mankind will come and bow down before me. Then they will go forth on the corpses of on the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me, for their worm will not die, and their fire will not be quenched, and there will be an abhorrence to all mankind. And the worm not dying, fire not being quenched, it's uh I'll just, well, I'm not going to even speak on that right now. But, uh, everyone is subject to King Jesus. Whether you, whether you realize it realize it yet or not. You're subject to his commandments. You're subject to follow him. And, uh, and it's got to be a legitimate following. It's got to be a legitimate relationship with God. We have to serve God with all our heart. We have to overcome. Sorry about the yawns. It's, it's just all hit me out of nowhere. I'm not even that tired. It's just, it's just uh, I'm yawning. But God is gracious. We all sin and fall short. We all screw up from time to time. But uh, God is merciful. He is gracious. And... Uh, we need to serve him. We need to be right with him. We need to be ready. We need to overcome and uh, we need to overcome and walk in all the ways of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Most High. I never thought that I would uh, get through all the prophets. But it's only by the grace of God because I only speak what he allows me to understand and, and what he leads me to do. And all glory to him, all glory to the Most High God. But this is the end of the prophets. Like I said, uh, Lord willing, we're going to continue on with the daily psalms. And Lord willing, uh, we're going to get started either tomorrow or Friday. Well, tomorrow is Friday. Either tomorrow uh, or Saturday, I guess. We're going to get going with another series, whether that's Enoch or the words of Jesus or both or something else. Uh, may may Yah's will be done. Let's overcome. Let's seek Him and serve Him with all our heart and be ready for the return of the Lord. There's not much time left. Let's do His will in all things. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for, if you haven't seen my uh, Jeremiah 50 and 51 Bible study, check it out. Uh, it'll be on this YouTube channel, uh, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash, slash Larry Newport, if you want to check it out. But, uh, I just did Jeremiah 50 and 51, the longest video I've ever done today. Um... Uh, I also put out 52, uh, the daily psalm is out, and this is the last one, Isaiah 66, hallelujah, all praises to God, thank you guys for tuning in, love y'all, shalom.